We are focusing on iconic Austin this month. We spent a lot of time this month talking about our favorite historical places in Austin, but I'm not from Austin. And yeah, I know I missed the era when it was still cool. So instead of looking back at places I didn't experience, I wanted to look forward to the future of Austin. That makes no sense at all. No, let me, let me start again. So I figured a good place to start was with the city demographer, Ryan Robinson. What will Austin look like 15 years from now? I think it'll certainly be bigger physically. It'll have a whole lot more people in it. It will be more diverse. And let's hope that it will be more affordable than it is. We have gone through what I would call foundational changes in the last few years. As a metro, as a full metropolitan region, we're above 2.2 million folks. We are beginning to see what the urban geographers call multinucleation. And what I mean by that is the region is breaking into big sections. And those big sections are seeing the most growth. Last year, the suburbs surrounding Austin grew faster than the city itself, but most employment is still centrally located. So what does that mean? A lot of people coming in from the suburbs to the jobs that are still in the core. To my mind, that argues for serious regional transportation and land use planning. You talk about housing affordability, gentrification, and transportation. To my mind, transportation is the key. Yeah, I'm sorry to tell you, this is also a transportation story. Robinson predicts that Austin's population will hit the 1 million mark by 2020, and the five-county metro area around Austin will see more than double that. Numbers like that put us on par with cities like Dallas, Philadelphia, and San Diego, all places with a robust public transportation system. Next up, uh, action item approval of a resolution accepting the uh, Project Connect Vision Plan. There are plans Couch. to expand public transit. Cap Metro is currently working on Project Connect, a regional transit plan that would link Austin to several suburbs. But how do you build for the future when you're already working to catch up with the present population? The answer is yes, we should and could be able to keep up and even be ahead of the game. That's Todd Hemmingson, Executive Vice President of Planning and Development for Cap Metro. And part of his job is making sure 10 years from now, you can still get around town. As we get into the 2 million, 4 million people over the next 20 years, we just can't continue to be dependent as we have been on the automobile. Uh, let the record reflect that the motion carries unanim unanimously six to zero. In December, the board of directors here at Capital Metro approved the vision plan. That really gave us a big step forward in terms of setting the high level vision of where we want to be over the next 10 to 20 years. And the next steps that are coming up is to um, dig into the details. We can't do it alone. It's got to be coordinated with the cities, the counties, all collaborating to come up with a comprehensive approach. Even the private sector, you know, now has gotten more into the game, so to speak, with the scooters and bikes and so on. All of those pieces need to be thought through as a system. For us to grow, we will need new funding sources. That is one important factor. Funding means a citywide vote in 2020, and that may be a tough sell. While Austin did recently pass a massive transportation bond, it's mostly being used to repair roads and sidewalks. The last major bond that would have funded a light rail failed in 2014. It's a challenge for sure, and that's one of the hardest, hardest things that planners have to do, I think, is get, try to get people to think 5, 10, 15 years out into the future when it's human nature to think about, you know, what's happening tomorrow. The future of transportation could even help preserve communities. Remember earlier when we talked about areas outside Austin growing rapidly? Some of that growth is being driven by people being priced out of the city core. There will continue to be tremendous pressures on um, you know, Austin neighborhoods if we continue to grow at the rate that we're growing. This is Elizabeth Mueller. She worked on a gentrification study commissioned by the city council. It identified Austin's most vulnerable neighborhoods, dubbed the Eastern Crescent. These are areas that have historically been communities of color, but now those long-term residents are being pushed out. It's important also to think about where displaced people go. We do have a large number of jobs downtown. All of that makes it more valuable living close in. So if we had transportation connecting those things, then that would, I think, reduce some of the 
pressure to live downtown. We've been growing very quickly for a long time and we've been growing in our inequity at the same time. So it's important to think about how are we somehow deepening that inequity as we grow and how can we change that. Mueller's team had some suggestions for the city council on how to keep Austin affordable emergency rental assistance, buying land, and tenant protections. But the key thing needed for each strategy is community input. Where there was some way for the community to stay engaged with that as it unfolded, it's a really important part of the process. Cities used to be for everyone. Well, now cities are more like economic centrifuges, right? If you can make it, great. But if you can't, you're going to be thrown out, you know? And so that's, I think, a challenge. And again, it's not just Austin. It's every successful American city has got that challenge in front of them. And for Austin, and pretty much every other major city, to tackle the issues of tomorrow, we have to start speaking up about them today.